moped crime exploded onto the streets as if from nowhere. Yeah, that's one of them then. There's so much of it happening now. That's an epidemic. It's literally Wild Wild West out here. Gangs are taking advantage of a stretched police force. Anyone's a target. Anyone, no matter who you are. And a congested city. We can fit through traffic, alleyways, anything, man. If you're in a police pursuit, if you take the helmet off, they stop the chase. Don't work like that no more. We have no desire to knock them off and cause any injury to them. However, we will use it. The public have had enough. Police aren't going to do something about it. I could be the spark for something a lot bigger. Fifth time and they saw us. But now, vigilantes are taking matters into their own hands. With a game of cat and mouse, just do what feels natural. Bring them to a stop. In this program, we investigate the gangs and those who try to stop them. Into the park, into the park, get round the other side. Yeah, we get everything up. Oh, they're coming! <laughs> In the past year, more than 60 attacks a day were committed using mopeds or motorbikes in London. A 50% increase on the previous 12 months. Every street offers rich pickings for moped gangs. A bike can be hot wired in seconds and ultimately used in a crime. Yo, everyone keep an eye on their helmets. People, someone's been lifting helmets. And no one is more furious than the bike community. I think at the end of the day, the police aren't listening to no one. They're listening to themselves. They're not, they're not listening to our views. They're not listening to what we want and how we can help the community. The bike thieves, they, they're reckless. They don't care. The police will chase them, but I mean, they're just going to get away. That's why this whole thing's blowing up. In London, two moped thieves have agreed to speak about their criminal lifestyle. They've met at a neutral location. They have a stolen motorbike with no keys, but that's not a problem. No keys, nothing. It's way more easier to get into than anything else. You can do this whenever you want. Go to school, come back, do it, weekends, do it. It's, it's easy to get into, like, there's nothing really stopping anyone. Like, anyone can just come and do it whenever they want to. It's way more easier than it needs to be. Like, anyone can just get a bike if they know how to do it, um, you steal it in like seconds. 20 seconds, you got it. Young people just like riding bikes and making money. It's more easier and they're having fun while doing it. Being a moped thief is dangerous, often resulting in high-speed police chases. When you're getting chased by police, as much as people say they don't get scared and stuff like that, everyone gets scared yeah. because you know that your life, like, something can happen to you and most people do, like, see, want to see their family and stuff like that. So when you're doing it, it's just like, your heart just starts pounding. When I'm just riding a bike, I feel it. It's just like, it's like a good feeling and then like, it just fills you with excitement. It depends on who you are. Like, some people don't get it in t unless they're getting chased by police. This criminal activity has spread beyond London. In the West Midlands, moped crime rose by 40% between 2014 and 2017. This gang has agreed to talk anonymously in a random location about moped crime. Have they ever chased you guys before? Yeah. All of us. All of us. We can fit through traffic, alleyways, anything, man. Fuck the police. Can I stop more one? Whoa! <laughs> You know, driving a bike, it feels fun, man. I swear to God, riding a bike, you know, it takes. It's just fun, eh? <laughs> Nothing better. Sometimes I'd rather be on a bike because I know that I'm getting away if I see police. I reckon the crimes were up in London because there's more bikes. If there was more bikes around here, you'd be getting them every day. Around here, there's nothing, but in London, it's full, man. Get me, go get another bike, go get another bike, go get another bike. Straight. If I like a necklace and I jump off the bike, I'll grab that, but no problem. 
<laughs> no problem whatsoever, I've grabbed her. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like your phone, I've grabbed her as well. <laughs> Isn't it? These guys aren't worried about the police, but there is one man who's starting to rattle them. Hand muffed warrior, yeah? Tell him to go fuck his mum and tell him that we're still out here, yeah? Doing everything. He ain't, he ain't stopping us, he ain't doing shit. Fuck hand muff warrior, man. Meet hand muff warrior. A man who spends all his spare time confronting moped gangs on the streets of London. Evil flourishes when good men do nothing. I've been branded a vigilante. For me, it's not fair. If the police aren't going to do something about it, then you've got to start to fight back. What else are you meant to do rather than take matters into your own hands? I'm driving behind them. Um, I'm following them. You know, so a lot of the times I'm shouting at them. Who? Who are you? I'm just trying to intimidate them, you know, just the way that they intimidate others. I, I put it online for the world to see. I've got you on camera! Omar doesn't just confront criminals on the streets. Hey guys, today I'm going to upload a video. a video. He also has a YouTube channel where he exposes moped criminals. With over 60,000 subscribers, it's growing daily. Guys, stay safe. You never know when there's a dirty scrope behind you. Peace out. A lot of people don't actually recognize when moped thieves are around. And they, the way they drive, you know, some of them drive 60 mile an hour in a 20 zone. They're gone before you know it. And the power of the camera is that you can capture that moment. You can actually even follow them if, you, if you're on a fast enough bike. And you can slow that moment down for everyone to see. I could be potentially the spark for something a lot bigger than my channel. And that's, that's what I want to achieve. Omar has organized a team of other bikers enraged by this new crime wave. This evening, they're preparing to patrol London streets in hopes of catching moped thieves. I'm gonna drive there, you know, drive slow in formation, drive back. If we see illegal riders, just do what feels natural in trying to like bring them to a stop. Just proceed if it's safe to do so. They are prepared to apprehend, complete with restraints. The hunted have become the hunters. I'm getting death threats every day. All my death threats are usually Instagram. It says, heads up, man. I heard there's a kill squad from W12 looking for you. I know your wife's name. You better hope I don't see them before you. I beat you, had move. Grass him. A little more for you. I'm going to stab you when I see you. And then I'm going to take you off that more back. A little more for Watch. Moped crime has hit the high streets. These brazen attacks are happening in broad daylight. The public are under siege, prompting the Met to set up a specialist task force called Operation Venice to reclaim the streets. We have specialist trains officers in pursuit tactics. We also have a dedicated investigation team to bring offenders to justice. We have no desire to knock them off and cause any injury to them. However, that is a tactic that is available to us, and if it is appropriate for us to use it, we will use it. Yes, 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 yes. MP, MP, active message, Scorpion, at 3-4. We have a moped failing to stop. Go on, Dave, go on, Dave. Parmeter Street, E2. Since July 2018, Operation Venice has helped to turn the tide on moped offences. Thanks to a range of new tactics, such as DNA spray and slimline bikes. MP, we're a TPAC driver, TPAC vehicle marked BMW 5 Series. We're continuing towards Victoria Park. Stand by for road name. 
Go, go, go. Scorpion to the other side of the park, get to the other side of the park. Scorpion 81, the solo has gone with it. It's gone through Victoria Park towards Gore Road, E2. Uh, Frimpo, I think we've lost Victoria Park area. Got no better at the moment. MP, um, yeah, it's complete loss, Victoria Park, Gore Road area. Over. It is challenging for us. London is unique in terms of the obstacles and challenges that we have to overcome, but we are adapting in order to bring those offenders to justice. Where is it, mate? Word has come through on the radio that the moped has been spotted in a nearby estate. It's definitely the bike. Please don't tell me you put a lock on it. Oh, it's outrageous. Uh, yeah, Skip, we've just had a pursuit with um, an LOS. Uh, we've now recovered it with the help of the tasking team. Over. Cracking job. It's warm, it matches the description of what we just pursued, and ultimately, um, it's come back to a stolen bike. The number plate that's displayed actually doesn't relate to this bike, but it relates to another stolen bike. So they've actually got a false plate from another stolen bike on it as well. So. Again, it shows how brash these guys are, really. Whoever has uh, ridden it has gone to the extent of locking it and covering it, so it's clearly a bike that they'd like to keep. So my colleague is cutting the lock off because we're going to seize it, we're going to take it back to the police car pound as it is stolen, and we're going to restore it to its rightful owner. Cheers, boys and girls, thank you. There's always been crime committed on mopeds mainly due to the fact that they are incredibly agile. You can get from A to B very, very quickly on two wheels. Omar, a.k.a. Hanmuff Warrior, is a courier by day and vigilante by night. He's delivered parcels around London for three years. A lot of my encounters with moped thieves is just when I'm minding my own business and I'm just working, to be honest. I found a way to actually capture these guys on camera, follow them. Filming every minute of his working day, Omar hopes to shine a light on moped-enabled crime across the city. I'm pretty much the only one actively going out trying to expose moped thieves. Omar didn't just become a vigilante. He's been attacked four times in the last year. I was stabbed in the hand. Uh, I was chased. I was actually kicked. One of his attacks, filmed on his helmet cam, went viral. I pulled into the side road because usually my friends wait there. And as I do a U-turn to escape back, they ran me. Each one of them had a hammer. Something inside just told me, you know, not again. I've had a bike stolen before. I don't want to just give up my bike to these guys. I'm very paranoid. Now, Omar takes special precautions whilst working as a courier on London streets. If the police actually took control of the issue, then I wouldn't need to go to work with a stab proof vest. I want to work as a courier. I want to earn a living, but I feel like I'm at risk. It's literally wild, wild west out here. Omar and some biker friends are on a patrol to look for moped criminals. They've come to Islington, one of London's hotspots for moped thieves. Even though we didn't see him today, it's always a game of chance. It's a game of cat and mouse. Are we going to see them? Are we not? Now, when I'm by myself, I see him all the time because I'm on the road so much. You know, one thing I've learned today is it's a lot easier for the thieves than it is for us. Um, you know, whereas we're bound by the law and, you know, obviously we can't be armed. You know, these guys can be effective within two or three of them, and they can be effective. It's very easy to get a group of two or three people. Whereas with us, to ensure our safety, we've got to have like eight or nine of us just to ensure it's safe. Because again, we're not allowed to be armed. I feel like this guy approaching with his high beam on. Automatically, I'm wary. Well, he's just a courier. But the moment I see high beam, I start to think there's a reason for it. I think Islington was one of the first areas where moped-enabled crime started to happen and started to get out of control. Um, 
it's very hard to talk about it so like freely when I've got to like think about safety and who's watching who. And, you know, there's a lot of kids in this area. There's a lot of I'm getting a lot of dirty looks. Sorry, my mind's just I just, just trying to watch out for us at the same time. There's a lot of people looking and stuff. I don't feel like we're safe here. We've been uh, spotted quite a few times. So. Omar is worried that the presence of the camera is endangering his team. These guys are well connected, as well connected as we are. Within minutes, there could be five, six guys putting on banner carvers, you know, getting to their stolen bikes, getting their weapons. They could be here within five minutes. You ready, guys? Even though the night ride out wasn't a success, Omar is always on the lookout for anything suspicious. You see that motorcycle there? No number plate, that's a stolen motorcycle. That is the problem. They're all over. They just pull out quick. With over 200 mopeds stolen on average per week in London, Omar often finds the bikes they leave behind. I'll watch out because there could be someone watching nearby has an interest in this bike. Hi, please, please. I found a suspected stolen bike. Just wondering if you guys could come and take a look at it, because it's got no number plate. It looks like it's been hot-wired. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Basically, they're too busy to, to come. They said they definitely will come within 48 hours. By then, it could be too late. The bike could be taken by the thieves, and it could be on the other side of London. So that's what's frustrating. There's not enough police on the roads to actually respond to this sort of crime someone potentially could die as a result of this bike being left here. And I'm not being dramatic. It, these crimes are happening on a day-to-day -day basis. So potentially this could be a getaway vehicle for a murder. And that's what we're trying to stop. I just want to put pressure on both the police and the thieves. Bad crime, well, it's just the easiest thing. Bikes are just everywhere across the streets and even crimes on the backs are, like, easy to do because you've got transport, of course, like, you're getting away anywhere you go, like, so... Kind of thrilling. <laughs> it is. It really is. I mean, last week we had a helicopter chase that went on for, like, two hours. <laughs> but that didn't really infect us at all. It didn't get us scared. We didn't panic. We just carried on and looked back up. No helicopter. Looked behind us, no police cars. We got away. <laughs> there used to be a rule. If you're in a police pursuit, if you take your helmet off, they stop the chase. But like, now, even if you take your helmet off, they're still going to chase you and try to ram you off. <laughs> it's like, don't work like that no more. Anyone's a target. Anyone, no matter who you are you're going to be a target to, to us. <laughs> In Bristol, the biker community has been under attack. Criminals are stealing their bikes to joyride around the city. And now, they're burning bikes for likes. So two Bristolian bikers, Martin and Dom, have created the Bristol Bike Recovery Team. Consisting of over 200 members who are taking direct action by hunting down stolen bikes. Voila! Just what I've been looking for. The bike we've been after. To date, they've reunited over 60 stolen bikes to their rightful owners. Another one. Pretty sure but this is the one that's uh, been posted oh, on our group. So yeah, let's get it gone. Well done, boys. Seeing the bikes being mistreated and you know that that's someone's pride and joy that we've spent a lot of money on is... It's not very nice to see, so that's, that's why we started doing what we do. These members have eyes all over the city, ready for action. I would say, in all fairness, we're probably more activists, aren't you? Always, yeah. We're just people upset and angry with what's happening in our community. A lot of people sit at home on their sofas, don't they, saying yeah. they do this, they do that if their bike got stolen. But generally what happens is they post on our group <laughs> when their bike gets stolen, so... Yeah. 
They've just been alerted about a possible stolen bike, but time is against them. Many bikes will have new number plates in a matter of hours. As there's only two of us this morning, and we're going to a dodging area, obviously we will leave the bike where it is, call it in, run and get the van, and then go back and grab it. And then obviously, yeah, we deal with it the normal way. We call the police, let them know we've got it, give them all the details, they contact the owner, and then, yeah, we go and deliver it back to them. I love it. I absolutely love what I do. It's the enjoyment of taking it back to the owner. I mean, we've had a couple, there's one where it was a nurse, you know, and she couldn't get fully comp insurance. Her bike was gone for over three weeks. She, we, well, in all fairness, we all thought it was gone. By that time, usually they've burnt it out. All for what? For some little shits to go out and get a bit of five minutes of enjoyment and burn out a bike. It's, it's ridiculous. The clock is ticking. They need to find this bike before it's set alight. Last year in Edinburgh, motorbike joyriding was a major issue. To tackle this, police introduced scrambler bikes capable of going off-road. Stop, offender tag agent. And DNA spray with a unique code that can be sprayed at suspects from a distance should they evade capture. Police have rolled out Operation Soteria, a motorbike crime task force. Okay, folks, evening. You know the purpose of why we're here, and that's to do with the uh, extreme motorcycle thefts that's been occurring within Edinburgh City Centre. Sergeant Monteith is running an undercover operation. His team have identified theft hotspots and are planting bait bikes in Edinburgh in an effort to catch criminals red-handed. A bait bike is a motorbike trap to lure criminals out of hiding. The timeline for today, as per yesterday, 1,400 hours, the boat bikes and bicycle were deployed to the site, and we've got resources in place keep an eye on them in an attempt to detect, deter, disrupt and detract these people from attending these areas. If they do make off, we're not surveilling them, we're chasing them and bring them a successful arrest. OK? Undercover operations such as this have had a big impact on reducing bike crime in Scotland. Things have moved on remarkably, and it's less of a problem than it has been in the past. There was a 10-year-old child knocked down, and the response to that, there was a big public outcry across the city. And there was that community response and uh, really spelling out to people that were involved that uh, it's no longer acceptable to ride more bikes like that within the community. Living in a motorbike crime hotspot, mother of three Christine knew it was only a matter of time before someone would get hurt. It was started out a fairly, fairly normal day. The traffic stopped on both sides. And I turned round for two seconds. And I heard the impact for the bike to Cameron. And then holy scream. A scream I've never heard before. Um, that our brother had just been hit by a motorbike. He was just bleeding. Everywhere, his, his, his leg wasn't where it was supposed to be, his arm wasn't. Yeah, he was. He wasn't in a good way. <laughs> the last words my nine year old daughter at the time was asked, asked me, is, is her brother going to die? And I, I, had, I had to tell her, I don't know. It happened quite fast. I can't really remember much of it. I had to get surgery and... Because they thought my neck was damaged and my, like, brain was damaged. So they, um... I had an x-ray and then surgery the same day. The guy who hit me left me for dead. That's what I'm most upset about. I thought he, that I could have lost him. Just... It doesn't bear thinking about, so... <sighs> Bike crime happens probably because they can, especially last year before Cameron got hit. It was a game. It was a game between the police and the, the joyriders. They knew they couldn't be stopped. 
And to be honest, in our area, the only reason it has stopped is because my child nearly ended up dead. In London, Operation Venice, the Met Police's moped crime task force, are patrolling East London. Officers Clem Jones and Alan Pierce are specialist TPAC drivers looking for moped criminals. These drivers can use a range of techniques to terminate a pursuit, including tactical contact. A large amount of the problem is that there's a myth amongst uh, the moped users that the police will not chase them. And there's also a myth that uh, if they remove their helmets or they take to the pavement, that we won't pursue them. The problem has become so widespread within London that we, uh, we as the police, cannot allow that to happen and we need to deal with it. A call has gone out for a red moped with a driver in a high-vis vest. Go, 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 go. Come on. There he is, there. Oh, Hold on. Don't do it. Don't do it. Straight into the park. Into the park, into the park. Get round the other side. Stop, 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 Yeah, MP, it's got me 3 4. I'm on scene with this job. Uh, the male is detained. No visible injuries at the moment. If you give us one minute, I'll update you over. Okay, thank you. Keys, have you got ID on you? No? Is the moped yours? Or is it stolen? The actual um, conclusion to the pursuit was brought about by tactical contact. Um, that is one of the many strands of uh, options that we have. Uh, to us, fired at. Uh, and this occasion it was simply justified by the manner of riding on a footpath through a park, endangering people's lives. Uh, we can't allow it to continue. If we hadn't have done this, what would he have done further down the road? When the police ask you to stop, you stop. Easy as that. So basically, at the moment the suspects have been arrested for suspicion of five offences. Uh, first one being failed to stop for police, uh, suspected theft of a motor vehicle. Uh, possession of a Class A drug with intense supply, uh, failing a roadside drug test uh, and dangerous driving uh, due to the manner of his driving during the pursuit. So I'm happy uh, and at the moment it's ended quite well and uh, we're further investigating. How is he? Is he going to be OK? I suspect he'll be fine. The Bristol Bike Recovery Team are on the hunt for a stolen motorbike. They have reason to believe it's still in the city. I'm going to suit up a minute, just before we go right now. Bike thieves often carry weapons to threaten anyone who challenges them. The team wear stab-proof vests for their own protection. At the moment, we're around the back of Old Market in Bristol. This is one of our known areas for gangs and drugs and things like that. So we know this area quite well. So yeah, we're just going to go have a look around all the parks and that and just see whether we can spot where they've actually, where they've actually hidden it. Do you want to check the bushes that side, mate? I'll check and go over here. The easiest are obviously uh, things for tyres, taking off tyres and that. It's like sockets, spanners, everything up right there, someone's bag. There's bloody needle paraphernalia right there. 
There's obviously a lot of drug taking and that going on around there. A lot of the time, you have to think like a criminal. You sort of know what that side of life is like, if you get what I'm saying. And yeah, and that helps us a lot. Dom has received a tip. One of the online members has spotted the bike and have sent through a photo. What come through on the Facebook is someone's posted the picture to say possibly stolen bike by Mackie Dees. It's got um, Pebble Dash. Look for Pebble Dash. It's not down there. I'm just gonna try and message a kitty and see if he can give us a bit of a better idea of where it is. At the moment, it's just a picture. <laughs> a common tactic amongst thieves is to hide stolen bikes to see if anyone's tracking them. It's often a race against time to find the bike before the thieves return. And here they are. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of them then. There we go. The heat is turning up for moped vigilante Omar. The success of his channel has consequences. This week has been really hard. I've been spotted a lot whilst I'm working, more than usual. Probably like, you know, once every two hours. I'm getting noticed about three times a shift. Every time I have to move from one area to the next, it's time consuming. And yeah, what I'm doing is affecting my work. It's affecting the amount of money I'm earning. It's not just his job which is being affected. Omar's now taking more risks whilst riding his motorbike to avoid being targeted by thieves. I'm up with thieves. All right, I'm outnumbered. Three of them. Guys, right now I'm in ghost mode, all in an attempt to not be in a victim to these guys, which means I've got no lights. You can say it's unsafe. I really don't give a because what are you doing? Stop me getting jumped. Omar has switched from night shifts to day shifts for his own safety. With his face and true identity now known by millions of people, the consequences of fighting back are all too real. What I'm trying to work towards, which is put pressure on these thieves. And actually, this whole thing started with me doing it alone. I'll try and put pressure on them. But in terms of actively going out to hunt them, it's a bit more trickier than I thought. I don't want to let them win. They've, they've taken my bike, they've attacked me. You know, they're making money off me. I don't, for me, it's not fair. As the crew pack the camera away, Omar is suddenly concerned he's been spotted. Did you see that? Yeah. yeah. Cars gone by, four or five guys, so we gotta leave from here. Potentially, they could come down here now with like four or five guys all armed. I would not encourage anyone or groups to take the laws into their own hands. By doing so, they put themselves in danger. I would much rather they report the matter to the police to allow us to investigate that incident. And furthermore, their actions could compromise ongoing investigations. The death of a 14-year-old boy who crashed a stolen motorbike in Edinburgh has prompted his aunt to reach out to other moped criminals. He had a smile for everybody, Brad. Everybody liked him, loved him. It was three o'clock in the afternoon. I'd just left work to walk home. And I seen Brad and his friend. Asked him what he was up to that day. I told him to be careful, gave him a hug, said goodbye. By the time I got into my house, took my jacket off, my neighbour was calling in to tell me Brad had been in an accident. My first reaction was, can it be Brad? I'd just seen him, like, five minutes ago. Brad came up this road, clipped the first car, went over the top of that and went under the second car, just here on this road. Can't help but think if I'd have just spoke to him for five minutes longer that day, he wouldn't have been here at that time. And how ironic, the box has got number 17 on it because that's what age Brad would have been this year. He was just a kid. I didn't deserve that. I still didn't deserve to die like that. 
Louise is using Brad's memory as a force for change in her community. After Brad's tragic accident, I've chose to go into youth work. For me, it's about keeping Brad's memory alive. And that's how I do it, just by talking to people about Brad's story. Joe riding mopeds is particularly appealing to young boys like Brad. Today, she's meeting two 13-year-olds who've also been mixed up in moped crime. We know you've been involved in the motorbike crime in the past. Can you tell us why you do that? Watching Gremlin. So you're going